Hello everyone, my name is Zenitsu and I'm back with another Digimon deck profile video. So today I'm going to be taking a look at BT08 and BT08 offers us lots of new and powerful cards to make and iterate on some new and existing decks. And today's deck is going to be a new iteration on Red Hybrids. So Red Hybrids is still going to be a deck that's going to be floating around it and it did get a couple of new tools that it could think about incorporating to really change up the deck to uh, make it have a couple of different play styles. So uh, I do think that the ancient play style is very very powerful but we're looking for something a little bit more aggro and a little bit more consistent instead of trying to rely solely on that one combo to be able to uh, deal lots of damage onto the opponent. So uh, I think with the way the meta is going, uh, having a big stack deck isn't necessarily the greatest thing in the world and you still need time to set up your combo plays and we don't want to give the opponent a lot of time to be able to set up and we just want to put our foot on the gas pedal and be able to go. So I think this version allows you to do that a little bit better. So without further ado, onto the deck profile. Starting off with the Digitama, I'm going to be running one copy of Kapurimon. Kapurimon is just the fifth Digitama of the deck. You don't necessarily need to have one if you don't want one, but uh, I just like what Kapurimon is doing for the deck because it's just your stereotypical DP booster with the condition of you just needing to have a tamer in play, which is not very hard considering we're a hybrid based deck. And that extra 1000 DP could be relatively useful depending on what your stack is and uh, who you're attacking with. But as far as the main Digitama of the deck goes, I'm going to be running 4 copies of Gurimon. So Gurimon is an absolutely insane uh, brand new Digitama to come out with BT8 and it's helping with one of the deck's biggest weaknesses which is the lack of good card draw. So uh, what Gurimon is doing is that he has this nice inheritable ability of uh, when attacking once per turn. If this Digimon has 6,000 or more DP, then we get to draw a card. So it allows us to use our mid-level Digimon and above to be able to help us draw cards to keep the engine going. Next, on to the rookies, I'm going to be running four copies of Flamon. So this is the BTO4 Flamon, and this Flamon is going to be uh, in the deck just because it's acting as a good search engine or tool looking for our tamers and our hybrids. So he has the nice on play ability where we get to reveal the top three cards of our deck. We get to add a card with a hybrid in its form and one red tamer from among them into our hand and then the rest go to the bottom. If you only see one of those two then you only are allowed to take one of those two but there is a decent chance where you could take both and that makes this card super valuable. Next, I'm going to be running uh, three copies of Flamon. So this is the BT07 version of Flamon, and this is another digging tool for the deck to use to try to compensate for the lack of card draw that Red generally has. So uh, this card has a slightly different on play ability where we get to reveal the top four cards, but we only get to add one card that's either a hybrid, Susanamon, or Takuya from among them into our hand, and then the rest go to the bottom of the deck. So he lets us see a little bit more, but he's a little bit more selective and picky on what we're going to be taking from. And then on top of that, he does have a nice upside where he has an inheritable ability where on delete, we get to play one Takuya from our hand. So ideally, if we want to try to search out our Takuyas or we're just sitting with the Takuya in our hand, then we could be hyper aggressive with the stack that's including him to be able to play our Takuya for free. Adding extra value into the deck just because sometimes playing a tamer could be a little bit hard and a little bit slow. Next, I'm going to be running four copies of Gamamon. So this is the brand new Gamamon that came out in BT08 and I think this card is actually a pretty decent card to be sitting on our field for how the deck wants to play because he has this upside where during your turn once per turn when we play a tamer then we get to draw a card essentially adding value to any tamer that we're going to be hard playing. So if we do have a turn where we just uh, move him up from raising then we hard play a tamer to set up our tamer. Drawing a card for doing that is just really good to again help with the overall consistency and keep the engine going on allowing us to play our cards easier. Then he has a nice uh, upside for being a good inheritable where when attacking if this Digimon has 6000 or more DP then we get to delete one of the opponent's uh, Digimon with 3000 DP or less adding in some good low level control for the deck. And then the last rookie of the deck is going to be two copies of Pokemon. So Pokemon, like both of the Flamons that we're going to be using, is another search engine or search tool for the deck to use. 
So he has the on play ability where we get to reveal the top five cards of our deck. Then we get to add a uh, card with hybrid or 10 warriors in its traits and one tamer from among them and put it into our hand. And then the rest go to the bottom in any order. So this is basically uh, doing the same thing that Flamemon is doing, just better because it's looking for any tamer and it's still looking for a hybrid with the possibility of looking for a 10 warrior. Then he has a nice upside for him just sitting on the field where during your turn once per turn, when one of your tamers would digivolve, then you get to gain two memory, basically making our evolution on top of our tamers cheap or free. Next, onto the level fours, I'm going to be running two copies of Agunimon. So Agunimon is in the deck just because he's a generic Digimon to allow us to Digivolve on top of our red tamers as if they were level three Digimon, and we could also use him as a good way to Digivolve on our stack just to have a good Digimon to use overall for the deck. Next, I'm going to be running four copies of Burning Greymon. So Burning Greymon is a really decent card because of all of the different ways that we could use him. So uh, we could use him uh, for three off of a level three, which isn't necessarily great, but sometimes we have to do that. Then we could Digivolve him on top of a level four for one, which is uh, pretty cheap and pretty efficient in case we want to try to make uh, whatever level four we want stronger or into a hybrid. Then we also could... Uh, Digivolve them on top of a red tamer for two, just adding to the overall flexibility on the different methods of evolution to round out the possibilities that we could utilize this card for. Then what we're actually trying to utilize this card for, outside of the fact that he has 6,000 DP for our Gamamon and our Gurimon, is the fact that he has a good when digivolving ability, where if we digivolved him on top of a hybrid or a Takuya, then we get to delete one of the opponent's Digimon with 4,000 DP or less, adding some extra control for the opponent's low-level Digimon. And then the last champion of the deck is going to be four copies of Battle Gamamon. So Battle Gamamon isn't a hybrid, but it is a pretty decent card at being a very aggressive level four Digimon. So for the low evolution cost of two, he has 6,000 DP to trigger with all of our uh, Gamamon based synergies that we have. We do have a little bit, and he has the wind digivolving ability of Blitz. So Blitz just allows us uh, to be able to attack even if the memory goes over onto the opponent's side, if that Digimon was already able to attack. So he's just in the deck to try to help uh, shore up some of the weaknesses on our memory deficiency because red isn't necessarily the most memory efficient of color and blitz just helps with that. Next, onto the level 5s, I'm going to be running two copies of Aldemon. So this is the BTO4 version of Aldemon, and this is just one of the most aggressive level 5s that we have access to, if not the most aggressive level 5 that we have access to. So uh, natively, he has the ability Security Attack plus 1, so at worst, he's going to be able to hit for two checks, which is already pretty good, allowing us to deal lots of damage early on. Then on top of that, he helps uh, boost himself with his own secondary ability, where during your turn while this Digimon's Digivolution source includes a Digimon with hybrid in its form or a red tamer card, then he gives himself plus 4,000 DP, making him 11,000 swinging for two checks as a level 5 Digimon that we could potentially trigger some of our various other abilities off of and do various other things with. And similarly to that, I'm going to be running uh, four copies of Aldemon. So this is the brand new BTO7 version of Aldemon, and this is another really good and really strong tempo card to use to help accelerate what the deck is trying to do. So he has the ability where you could uh, digivolve him for basically one if your Digivolution stack has a tamer in it. So being able to basically go two on top of a tamer, then one on top of Aldemon just makes him a very cheap and efficient card to use to be able to end on and do various other things with, or be able to go into a level six to continue the pressure with a larger body. But he has a nice uh, when Digivolving ability to help boost himself to make him even stronger, where if this uh, card with hybrids in its traits is in this Digimon's Digivolution source, then this Digimon gains plus 4,000 DP, making him 12,000 as a level five Digimon. Digimon. So there's a lot that we could do with that level of power to be able to have him swing and be able to live. Then on top of that, he has a nice inheritable ability for us to take advantage of and is the primary reason why we want to see him as often as we possibly can is uh, because during your turn, while this Digimon has hybrids or 10 warriors in its traits, then it doesn't activate the security ability of option cards being checked in the security. So he's just a fantastic card to shove underneath the source in our Takuya to be able to make any of our hybrids have the delicate plan-like ability 
so that way we could try to aggress as safely as we possibly can. And then uh, the only other Digimon of the deck that I'm going to be running is going to be our level 6, and that's going to be three copies of Emperor Greymon. So Emperor Greymon is going to be the stopping point for the deck, just because we're trying to actually aggress it with our uh, mid to low level Digimon. So what this card is doing that's really good for the deck is he has the Wind Digivolving ability of Blitz, so that way we could go all the way up the chain relatively quickly and easily with, and then end on Blitz it to pass the turn over to the opponent and still be able to attack. Then on top of that, he has a nice ability where during your turn, once per turn, when this Digimon is blocked, you get to unsuspend it, gain a memory for each Digivolution source that has hybrid in its traits, this secondary ability isn't going to matter a whole lot, but it could still come up depending on the matchup. We're just using this card as a level 6 uh, Digimon that has Blitz to help it be a really strong card with our Takuya. Next, on to the options, I'm going to be running 4 copies of Atomic Inferno. So Atomic Inferno is an absolutely insane card for what this deck is trying to do, just because it's adding some extra DP and it's adding some extra security attack to our Digimon. So uh, it's a, a low cost of 1 to allow one of our Digimon with hybrids in its traits to gain plus 3000 DP and security attack plus 1, and the ability where if this Digimon is blocked, then we get to gain 3 memory. Again, the blocking part isn't going to come up that often, it still could, but mostly we're just using this as one of the cheapest and strongest boosts to our overall damage. Then on top of that, it has a nice security ability where all of our Digimon uh, gain the security attack plus 1 ability, so it's still just helping our overall damage output, whether it's in our hand or our security, and we could use this card to combo with various other cards. Next, I'm going to be running two copies of Gaia Force, so this kind of is a flex spot in the deck, it doesn't necessarily have to be hard removal if you don't want it, but I still just value having some big large body removal, just in case there's certain situations we can't get ourselves out of. So Gaia Force is one of the more powerful removal options, with the main ability of deleting one of the opponent's Digimon outright, and the security ability activates its main, just making it generically good to use for virtually any threat. And then... Uh, Last option of the deck is going to be two copies of Atomic Blaster, so again, this is another flex spot of the deck, it doesn't necessarily have to be Atomic Blaster if you don't want it to be, I just value having different forms of removal to try to handle and deal with certain situations. So uh, what we're using this card for is the fact that it's a slightly cheaper card to help remove uh, mid-level Digimon, where we get to choose uh, any of the opponent's Digimon whose total DP adds up to 8,000 or less, and to delete them. So if they just have a field of rookies, then we could use this card to help delete that field of rookies, or if they're just sitting on a level 5 that we can't necessarily get rid of, then this will help get rid of that level 5, with the security ability of activating its main, so like Gaia Force, it's just going to be a really good removal card for the deck to use generically. And then lastly, onto our tamers, I'm going to be running uh, two copies of Tai Kamiya. So Tai Kamiya is going to be one of the memory fixing tamers for the deck to use, and he doesn't necessarily have that great of synergy with the deck, but he's still pretty good when he comes up. So he has the ability where uh, all of your red Digimon with four or more Digivolution sources gain security tech plus one to allow us to try to increase our overall damage output. So whether we're using him in combination with Takuya to just shove a whole bunch of cards under Takuya to easily be able to trigger this ability or just go all the way up our stack into an Emperor Greymon, it doesn't necessarily matter, it just allows us to deal some extra damage in various different ways, even though it might not trigger all of the time. And speaking of our Takuya, I'm going to be running uh, four copies of Takuya because he is going to be the most important card in the deck because of everything this card can do. So he has the security ability like all of the other tamers to be able to play himself for free, which is always good because sometimes it's a little bit harder to play our tamers. On top of the fact that he has the ability to help set up our stack for various different abilities and to help trigger our Tai Kamiyas. So his main ability states that we get to place uh, 5 cards with hybrid in their traits from our trash underneath him in any order to be able to uh, digivolve him into an Emperor Greymon from our hand uh, by paying its digivolution cost as if this tamer was a level 5 Digimon. So Emperor Greymon normally won't be able to do that, but with Takuya's ability, we could just easily have an access point to be able to digivolve into our Emperor Greymon basically whenever we feel like. The crazy thing about this card is the fact that you don't necessarily have to always digivolve into Emperor Greymon, you could just generically shove 5 cards underneath him, and then digivolve on top of a level 4 hybrid to gain some various other benefits that way. 
So he already has lots of flexibility just based on that first ability alone. And he even has a really good inheritable ability for our hybrids to use where this Digimon gains plus 2000 DP. And if this Digimon has over 10,000 DP, then he gains security tech plus one to be another card to help with the, our overall aggression and damage output. Next, I'm going to be running two copies of Hero. So Hero is going to be another memory fixing tamer to run in complements to Tai. So uh, we could have both out and reap the benefits of both of these tamers because they do different things. So even though they will always hard set our memory to three, if it's anything less than three is really good. Uh, so that way we aren't necessarily afraid on Digivolving on top of one or the other because we know we have uh, both of them to be able to back up the deck in terms of uh, their memory. Then on top of that, uh, his own ability states that when we attack uh, with a Digimon with Gamamon in its name or a level 5 or higher, then we get to suspend this tamer to give that Digimon plus 2000 DP to add to their overall DP, making them a little bit stronger than my than they normally would be. So we could use this in combination with Beetle Gamamon to make them at least 8,000. Then if we use this in combination with Atomic Inferno before swinging and Digivolving into Beetle Gamamon, then we can make him... 11,000 as a level 4, swinging with Blitz and Security Attack plus 1, which is really, really crazy to think about. And then uh, the last uh, tamer of the deck is going to be two copies of Analog Youth. So Analog Youth is an absolutely insane uh, tamer card, even though we won't be able to use him to Digivolve with. He's just in the deck because he's a cheap tamer to play, and he helps with the overall setup and consistency of our deck. So he has the on play ability where we get a look at the top three cards, add a Digimon card from among them into our hand, and then the rest go to the trash. So ideally we want to grab uh, a hybrid and then trash the other hybrids. So that way it could easily fill up our trash for our Takuya's ability to activate so we could use them as quickly and often as we possibly can. Then he's a really good card to combo with our level fives to be super aggressive with, where during all turns, when one of our level 5 or higher Digimon with a Digivolution source is deleted, then we get to unsuspend this tamer, gain a memory, and hatch a Digi-Egg into an empty space in our raising area. So it really rewards us for wanting to be aggressive with our level 5s and level 6s, and de-incentivizes the opponent from wanting to uh, delete our level 5s and our level 6s as a result as well. And then there's still just a lot of room for customization, depending on the types of tools and mechanics you want to be focusing on. So if you just want to run a generic rookie, then we do have access to Gaussmon as a really good generic rookie floodgate to try to stop the opponent from reducing their Digivolution costs, which against decks like Yellow Hybrids actually could matter. And uh, they do have an upside compared to all of the other uh, floodgates uh, in this stat line where he has the ability to boost himself if you have more of him on the field, which could be relatively useful. Then if you are playing around with the Blitz mechanic, just because we already have some decent Blitz Digimon, then you could run the BTO6 Shoutmon to help with the overall card draw for when we're attacking with our Blitz Digimon. And we do have some other Blitz Digimon we could think about adding into the deck, like adding a level 5 with Blitz in the form of a Suramon, and then speaking of Blitz, we even have a level 7 in the form of Blitz Omnimon to try to act as a good card to help close out the games with. And then if you want to default back to a uh, pure hybrids build, then we do have the BTO6 Flamon as a good card to use for an inheritable ability to give our uh, hybrids and 10 warriors the piercing ability to be able to attack into the opponent's Digimon and control them that way. We also have the BTO4 uh, Burning Greymon as another really aggressive uh, level 4 Digimon uh, to use uh, whether we're Digivolving him uh, for 3 on top of a Red Tamer or we're using him to Digivolve for 3 on top of a uh, level 3 Digimon. It doesn't necessarily matter. He's just going to have at 9000 DP when he swings and we could boost him in various different ways to make him even stronger and more threatening. Then if you want to go full Ancient Setup and Ancient Combo, then we do have uh, the uh, promo Agunimon to help make going into our Ancient that much easier. So whether we're hiding him and raising and building up a big stack it, to be able to reduce his uh, evolution by two to make him cheaper to Digivolve into is really good. Or we could have him have basically Pseudo Blitz where we could attack with the Agunimon and then warp Digivolve into the Ancient to deal some quick and easy damage just makes him a very appealing card. 
And then the ability we're trying to take advantage of uh, when using the Ancient Package is the fact that he could just deal lots of security onto the opponent for each Greymon and Hybrid in his Evolution Source. He'll just gain a Security Attack Plus, so he's just able to deal lots of damage very quickly on top of, like all of the other Ancients, be able to replace himself with a level 4 or lower Hybrid when he dies. Then we do have a couple of offbeat cards that you could think about running depending on how you want to tech and build the deck. So we do have access to BTO4 Rise Greymon to use his Digiburst ability to not only help fill our trash for our Takuya, but to be able to help play our uh, Tamers a little bit easier is really, really strong. And then he has a nice inheritable ability for when we're attacking with our higher level Digimon, where we get to minus 2000 DP to one of the opponent's Digimon when we attack as long as we have a Tamer on our field. So he's just another really good card to use, especially since he also counts as a yellow Digimon. It allows us to have the ability to think about utilizing some off-color cards or different synergies. And speaking of off-color and different synergies, we also have uh, the brand new BTO8 Chimeramon to use, just because he is a very good generic DNA Digivolution card for us to take advantage of, just because we could hide our level 3s basically as tamers, digivolve them into a level 4 in our hybrids, and then be able to DNA Digivolve them into a Chimeramon. And then uh, Chimeramon uh, is really good for his own ability, just because we could shove level 5s underneath his stack for our level 6, so we could shove uh, either the Bryze Greymon or the Aldemons uh, that we wanted to, just to try to help gain that ability for our level 6, and uh, he'll help uh, DP reduce the opponent's Digimon while being a really strong body. I don't think we're going to get to the point where he's going to have 4 or more colors, but he's still just a really good generic card to think about utilizing. And then speaking of other really good generic cards, we do have various different options to help with our control game plan in various different ways. But if we are going for consistency or just at boosting our memory, then we do have something like uh, Gravity Crush or Red Memory Boost to help us with our memory manipulation just because red isn't the most efficient color at being able to utilize its memory. Then if you do want to run a, a different Tamer lineup, then I would recommend including Yo Li, just because Yo Li is going to help with our memory manipulation. So Yo Li will gain us one memory for us literally having a red Digimon in play at the start of our main phase, so we could uh, put a red Digimon out of raising onto the battlefield and then easily gain that memory, or just have one sitting on our field already going into our turn, it doesn't really matter. And speaking of uh, cheap and efficient tamers, we could also uh, take the deck into a more Gamamon aggro focus and uh, play something like the Promo Hero to allow us to gain security attack one when we're attacking with a card with the Gamamon in its Digivolution source. The Promo Gamamon, that'll help uh, DP boost our Digimon while we have a hero in play, then we'll gain plus 2000 DP, so it's just a nice combo play to make whatever Digimon we want be extra aggressive. But yeah, that's just my interpretation of uh, what a uh, red hybrid stack it could look like in BT08. As I stated before, there's a ton of different directions that you could take the deck in. There's uh, the classic ancient version, uh, utilizing the ancient to deal lots of damage. You have lots of really good blitz cards to think about utilizing, and you even have some good Gamamon based synergies uh, to do various different things with, and uh, the inclusion of a couple of two color Digimon to help flesh out and round out what the deck could possibly do with your tamer line. Up. So I think this is going to be a really fun and interesting deck to see how people adopt it and if it's going to stick in the meta, but at the very least it's still a deck that's going to be hanging around just because hybrids and tamers are very very strong as is. So that's all I really have for this video. As always, feel free to tell me your thoughts down in the comments below, and down in the description below are a couple of different ways you could support me and the channel. So I do have a, a TCG Player affiliate link, so when you use that link to buy cards off of TCG Player, then some of that money will go to supporting me and the channel. I also do make and sell playmats over on Overcard Gamers on Facebook, so when you buy a playmat with my design, then some of that money will also go to help supporting me and the channel. And on top of all of that, I do have a Twitch account over on twitch.tv slash Zenitsu, so giving me a follow and a subscription also helps support me there, and I do play Digimon on top of various other games on that platform as well. So thank you everyone for watching, and as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more content, and I'll see you in the next video.